here. If it's your first time here on my channel, I want to thank you for joining me. And if you've been here before, thanks for coming back. You guys, I'm going to do another intuitive piece here. And I'm just getting my supplies all set out. And I thought I would just go over a few of these things. Right there, I'm going to be using a huge Filbert's brush that I got at Michael's. Um, and I think it's a size 30. I've got my handy quill there that I just laid down on the table. That also is a fabulous paintbrush to paint with and for blending purposes. I'm going to be using my Mission Gold, there it is, my Mission Gold Paints, okay, by Magello. And I'll drop the link for all this stuff uh, in the description box. So please go to the description box, box and click on those. If you do click on them, it will take you to Amazon and I am in the affiliate program, which means I make a small commission and it doesn't come out of your pocket, but I do make a small commission for bringing you to Amazon, but you only have 24 hours to purchase um, for me to be able to get any credit. So I would greatly appreciate it if you did use those links. That really helps me as an artist because I eventually want to get a website going that's subscription-based um, so I can get into uh, building better, um, more informative, more one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, videos for you guys. So stay tuned for that in the future. Right now, I am using my Magello paints and I am topping off my bulletproof case. Now, this paint came with the paints and the case. I don't know if that promotion's still going on, um, but uh, you'll have to check into all that when you're purchasing. So I am um, dropping, drop, I'm just dropping down some um, paints into, the paper is dry. Let's just start with that. There, I didn't stretch this paper. I didn't pre-wet this paper. It is dry. But as you notice, that first bud, I went in with a wet brush and kind of dropped some wet, uh, some water down. And then I loaded up the edge of that Filbert's brush and went in and kind of made some shapes of a flower, okay? Nothing in particular, these are all made up. The second one I did, I didn't wet the paper, but my brush was pretty wet and, um, and I made some shapes. Now I'm going in with that quill and I blended it out, okay? And right there I'm grabbing a little bit of uh, toilet paper tissue and just, uh, just picking up some wet or pigment. And right now I'm just using my fingertips to go into the fresh water, grabbing it, getting my fingers wet, and then just flicking it onto those petals and it creates kind of like a, a cool texture. And the colors, the red colors that I'm using there is Rose Matter and Red Violet. So I kind of used both of those. I kind of filled up the edge of the brush with two because when you use two or more colors that are in like the reds, you'll get a more interesting effect in your flower instead of just using one color. So try to use more than just one color. Stay within close tonal values of each other and colors, that will help. Okay, in the center, I ended up putting in some permanent yellow light. Now, the yellow and the red are going to create an orange. So I'm not gonna disturb it at all. I'm gonna let the two of those colors play around together. Um, when you work with yellow, yellow is probably the biggest bully out of all of the paints um, and it pushes other paints out of the way so if you it's really fun to watch yellow in play because you can put a bunch of pigment down and just drop in a little bit yellow and it just will push that other pigment to the side it's I find it amusing and fun to watch so anyway I, what I'm doing is I'm just dropping that uh, yellow in the center, letting things blend out. Um, now I'm going in and I'm just putting in some olive green. Because if you look into the center of a flower, typically you'll see kind of white, you might see yellow, you might see green. 
And because these are made up flowers, I'm just kind of putting those I those things that I've seen in all different kinds of flowers and I'm just kind of applying it to uh, this creative process. And now I've got paint on the edge of this brush and I'm just kind of putting more pigment on the outside edge of these petals, kind of defining them a little bit more. If I didn't do that, um, first of all, I want to pack a punch of color here because I want this painting to be extremely vibrant okay and i'm doing this intuitive piece i lost somebody extremely dear to me um this last week and uh and i know she's with her heavenly father in heaven and she's walking around some incredibly vibrant flowers so i thought you know what I'm going to push it to the next level and I'm just going to really pack a punch with my pigments today. So this painting is extremely vibrant. And I also use my paper is a um, is 140 pound cold press. I'm using Fabriano Artistico and I use it in the extra white. I prefer the extra white um, I just do. I just like that crisper, crisper color instead of that ivory kind of or yellowy, uh, creamy colored um, standard colored paper. So that's my go-to. That's what I like. I, I use the other one also, you know, but I prefer the bright white. And now I just have some olive green and I just kind of randomly put it down because I'm just kind of building the green that might be surrounding these flowers that are kind of clustered together. Um, and you know, sometimes you might just cluster some flowers together and they're just, I'm not thinking about composition so much because this is really intuitive. It's just a matter of putting the pigment down and then making sense of it, okay? So if it, if it doesn't quite look right, then you kind of, um, you drop in more pigments and make things happen. And that happens here in this painting and I'll kind of point that all out as we go. So right now I'm just blotting. I'm just using that toilet paper, it's one ply. It doesn't have like that heavy quilting and stuff on it because you know what? That heavy quilting, you guys, can actually drop marks on your paper that looks like the quilting. So that's why I try to find one ply. I use that brand Scott for the studio, S-C-O-T-T. -T. It's perfect, it works perfect. You can find it in any CVS, Walgreens, grocery store, it's at Walmart, it's everywhere. So it's readily available. I don't know what you guys have over there in Australia or the UK or you know wherever you might be, um, but it's just thin toilet paper. Okay, so now I'm using a liner. Okay, very inexpensive, master's touch, Hobby Lobby, long liner. It's probably about two inches in uh, brush length and that allows for um, me to be very loose with creating these long like leaves. And now I'm just loading up the edge of that brush again and I felt like I needed to put another um, uh, flower over here and so I drop that in and then I end up putting some down here at the bottom that are kind of dangling and hanging down. But here's the thing that happened, you guys. I, I did these buds here, these flowers. They're not really buds, they're, they're flowers. Uh, I did those so that they would be hanging down. I actually ended up signing the piece like that. And then as I lived with the piece, I'm like, you know what? I like this painting completely turned upside down. So what I did was, I always do my signature in, um, in pencil. So I cleaned that all off and I put some Dr. P.H. Martin down and covered it all up. 
and I spinned it and re-signed it in the other direction. So right now you're watching basically me paint this upside down. Um, but see, that's the thing. You just, until you're done, sometimes you really don't know what is the best way. Uh, of, I should have really turned it around and looked at it and studied it before I signed it, but sometimes we get so eager. Okay, so I have a skewer here. It's just a, you can use a twig. A lot of times I will grab my twig, but I do have my skewer here. Um, and I'm just scoring in some lines, like veins that might be on the petals, not doing too much, not being picky about it. Yes, I wanna have a little bit of curve to them. I'm not gonna just make them straight. They might look odd that way, but um, just putting that little extra interest in there. Now I've got my crayons out, my Neo Colors. These are water soluble crayons. And I'm just going to do a little scribbling here, you guys. Uh, it just, it keeps me being loose. It's adding another layer of interest into the painting. And it's fun. And I'm not being fearful in any way. You know, you might be thinking, oh my God, what are you doing? What are you do Why are you doing that? Um, doesn't matter. It's probably going to end up getting covered. It might peek through a little bit. Um, just have fun. Don't be, don't be afraid to throw in unusual things. Hey, maybe you want to just throw in some tissue paper and, you know, put it down and glue it down or do, just be super creative when you're, when you're doing your pieces. So now I'm just, um, uh, loading up that, uh, that brush again and I just keep building the color. And I'm building up the center here, just throwing in some yellow. And that yellow again is, uh, I believe that's the permanent yellow light. I also drop in permanent yellow deep. So I'm using two yellows. So it's not just flat with one color. Like I said, try to use more than one pink, try to use more than one green, try to use more than one yellow. It'll just make things more interesting. And also try to keep in mind how did these colors interact with each other? Because if you're trying to keep your painting extremely vibrant, you don't want things colliding together that are going to make mud. So kind of sometimes you might have to kind of pre-plan out, okay, these are the colors I'm gonna work with because they'll all play nice together. You won't have to worry about the mud situation. Anytime that you use uh, an opaque watercolor, look at the back of your tube and look at uh, to see if it's opaque. If you use opaque, you have the, a greater opportunity of making mud on your paper. So keep that in mind. Now I'm just dr dropping down that one ply paper. If you've never seen this before, then you haven't been watching my videos. I do this all the time. Um, what it's doing is it's picking excess water up. It's also kind of picking up some of the pigment which is gonna give me some of those high and low values, which is what I want, okay? So it kind of makes the flower feel a little bit more translucent also when it has that high and low values in it. Now I'm going in and I'm throwing down, oh, what am I putting down here? I'm going back from memory here. I, I believe, you know what, I'm putting in raw umber here. That's what I'm doing. Raw umber is going down. It kind of has a, it's brown, but it's got some yellow in it. So I just wanted to add just a little bit of depth into those centers. And then I also use the raw umber and I will be doing that here in a minute where I start throwing in um, and making some twigs. Right now I'm just using the pointy edge 
of my palette knife to score into the semi um, dry paint and it's separating and making like little twig shapes. And it's fun to do. <laughs> I like scoring into paint like that. I think it's neat. And you can do that with a twig. You can use that with, you know, just something like even the end of a credit card sometimes will do that for you. I even use the little plastic things that you close the bread with the little plastic square thingy. Um, I, I keep those. They're great for the studio. There you go. There's making twigs with the raw umber. Now I'm going in with more of that color and I want to build the center a little bit more. I wanted to I wanted to just bring in the red a bit more. I'm just pushing it as far as pigment. So it's layering basically. I'm slowly adding more and more pigment and increasing uh, the values of the color. And now I'm loosening it up a little bit. It was pretty heavy with pigment. I'm just loosening it up with a little bit of water in a spray bottle, mist it a little bit, and do a little tissue work there and pick up pigment where it is needed. Now that brush is loaded with some heavy pigment and I just kind of dropped it into the painting there and I let it kind of just spread out into the wet paper and the other pigments around it and let it do its thing. I'm not touching it. I'm just kind of leaving it alone. And that, that turned out kind of pretty there. And there is an area, somebody pointed out, that it looks like a little ladybug is kind of crawling in the flowers. And there is a spot, if you look at it real close, that there is something that kind of looks like a little ladybug. And that's the other thing with intuitive that's really fun to do too, is to put pigment down. And a lot of times it's easier to do that when you're using acrylics and stuff. And you put color down and you just kind of walk away from it and you look at it from a distance or you take a picture of it and you study it and you'll start to see like something uh, maybe maybe there's like a bird that's starting to, you can kind of see a bird or maybe you can see somebody's face or, and then you can build on top, you can build from that, which makes intuitive art so much fun. Sometimes we spend so much time thinking, God, what should I paint? I don't know what to paint. Uh, you know, and you're asking people, what do you think I should paint? You know, and you'll get somebody else's ideas or you're fretting about finding an image to work from or you're driving around trying to figure it all out and sometimes it's just so easy just to go into your workspace and just throw the pigment down and see where it takes you that's the way I like to paint and my flowers are always made up I very rarely will have something that I'm working from I have you know I do that, but for the most part, this is a lot more fun. Now I'm just rolling out some paper and I'm just gonna lightly press it down in certain areas. It just grabs a little bit of the stuff that needs to come up. Working on that center, that center is bugging me a little bit. See, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get it the way I want it. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my brush, do I? See, I'm just like, what do I do? What do I do? Where do I go? 
And I am working relatively quickly because I, 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 you know, I want the paint and the, the paper to, to, to stay wet so that the colors still spread and blend and, and do all that. So I do work pretty quick. So when I'm making these decisions, what do I do? Where do I put the brush? You know, it's like quick, kind of quick thinking. Oh, there I go. I threw yellow down on the sheet of paper. I just filled it up on my brush and gave it a good flick. Doing that with the green also. Sometimes that happens when I'm starting to get frustrated. But cool things, that frustration sometimes will add really uh, neat effects to your art, believe it or not. And those I didn't like, those big green blobs there, so I just kind of spread that out. Defining the petal edge. Increasing the size of that one. It was, it was a lot smaller, but I've now just made it a lot bigger. And doing the same stuff down at the bottom here. Now, how many times have I gone into those flowers now? Quite a few, right? Okay, so I'm not just doing one level, okay? You, when I say level, I mean layers. Layers, level, same thing, okay? Sometimes I say levels, I mean layers. These flowers that are at the bottom that end up being the flowers at the top, they turned out really, really cool. I really like them. One of them looks like it's actually kind of exploding, which is kind of cool. Looks like, looks like the center of the essence of the flower is like exploding out, which is it, that sometimes the coolest things happen if you just let things happen. Now, as you can see, this paper, this Fabriano paper, it's not, it's not rippling. It's laying flat, you guys. It's not on a board. It's just laying flat on my um, table. Now, my table has a tablecloth on it to grab any excess moisture that might be flying around. But that's, that's it. Okay, that's the spray ink. Now, I'm going in. And I'm just spraying some of these areas lightly and just pushing some major pigment here. How cool did this stuff turn out? This stuff is by Ranger, and I think it's called Delusions. Let's see. Delusions Ink Spray by Ranger. This stuff is awesome. I think I bought it at Michael's. I think you can, get, you can get it on Amazon too. I'll try to drop the link for you with that. And this one was in turquoise, a vibrant turquoise, turquoise vibe. Love it. I use this in some of my other. There's a there's another one called um what's it called? Spray stain is another one. Just look for those things that. They might not even be in the paint section. They might be in the crafting section. Look at all that stuff. Some of that stuff you can bring into play into your watercolors and make it multimedia. So, and don't throw, here's the thing. I found this out. My 
ex-mother-in-law is a watercolorist and she was she's what well, she's getting up there in age but her stuff is fabulous and my daughter says oh I got one of grandma's paintings and then she showed it to me and I about fell over I'm like that is fabulous do not and don't throw away your old paintings I'm not throwing any of mine away anymore and you can use them in your multimedia um, paintings later down the road so just throw them in a box you and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that eventually uh, what you can do with those old paintings so don't throw them away now I'm just going in and I'm just kind of fine-tuning things the painting is pretty much getting to the point of being completed and this is like the finish finishing touches that's happening um, so it's just assessing what's going on, what may need to still happen. See where I'm going into the center. I'm going, when you look down into a flower, sometimes it's really dark down in there. So I'm just adding that, um, depth with the color. I'm just intensifying it there. So think about that. You don't want it just... You just gotta keep adding that pigment, you guys. Don't be afraid to add that pigment. And what I want you guys to do, please, I am growing a community over on Facebook. I think I've got over 300 people now, and it is great, and I'm able to see what you guys are creating, and I can, I can help you, I can look at what's going on and make suggestions of what you need to do. Okay, it lets me see also where I need to talk to you guys and what I need to address when we're uh, when I'm when I'm painting what you may need help on. So please go over to my Facebook group. You'll find that link up in the top of my actual um, channel page, and you can click on it. Please send some love over there to my Instagram. I need some help over there on my Instagram. Um, I need to get my numbers up on that thing and that's it this is my painting you guys I hope you enjoyed it I love doing these videos for you guys so in the meantime be safe stay well and may God bless you mightily you guys go in peace bye for now